What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Monday evening, September 5th, 2022. It's about 8.44 p.m. West Coast time here in California. And I uh, hope everyone enjoying their Labor Day weekend. We got a 1.3 earthquake here into the area of Alaska. The latest quake here showing up on the Earthquake 3D globe. Notice the very minimal activity across the eastern Pacific here, across California. We haven't seen too much earthquake activity ramping up there uh, compared to days prior. All right, let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the map here on the USGS scale. Looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here across the flat scale model Earth. Latest quake shows a 4.6 here into the area of Papua New Guinea at 61 kilometers. We have been noticing a little bit of movement here across the area, including Va uh, Vanuatu area uh, over the last 24 hours there, showing some seismic uh, unrest. This activity down here into the Kermadec Trench. Some older movement from this morning time frame, including a 5.3. Nothing really popping up here throughout the evening time frame, so... Uh, just kind of seeing a little bit of migrational earthquake activity uh, following this deeper movement in Fiji and the uh, major adjustment that we've seen throughout the divergent boundaries here across the Pacific Plate. Of course, in China, seen some activity there, of course, late last night, seen that large earthquake. What has happened since then? Well, we've seen a couple earthquakes here, and the majority of those are much further to the east. So we got a scoot here a little bit. We had a 4.7 in the Japan region. The latest quake um, on the map. But prior to that, we've seen a 4.1 pretty deep here into the Japan Trench at 4.1 uh, magnitude at 121 kilometers deep into that area. Pretty deep earthquake movement. So a little bit of adjustment following all this large scale activity we've seen over the past 24 hours. Uh, out into the big island of Hawaii. We get a 4.0 in the Pahala mix. That uh, Sometimes we see these four-pointers kick up here. And it's not uncommon. Looking at the all-magnitudes map here over the last 24 hours shows the uh, continual swarming activity kicking up here around Pahala, the southeastern region of the big island. This is very typical down there at about 32, 33 kilometers uh, below the surface there. All right, West Coast activity. What do we got building out here along the West Coast? We got a 2.8. That earthquake striking out there uh, much, much earlier this morning time frame. It's kind of out there in the Gorda escarpment area. This is uh, it's a Gorda plate here. Kind of draw a line across this plate boundary here. Even though it's listed as a hole, as far as the Juan de Fuca plate goes, the Gorda plate is a little small micro plate. Uh, micro plate along with the uh, Explorer plate up here to the north. Juan de Fuca plate there in the middle. Little activity kicking up there today. Earlier this morning, like I mentioned, offshore. Um, aside from that, uh, man, if you look at California once again, things have really dropped off following all that large-scale activity that we've seen China westward. Notice that. It's that teeter-totter effect, and it does stretch all the way across this region here. The Pacific Plate builds up pressure here against the uh, Philippine Plate. And you got areas here to the west where it also builds up pressure. But once we see that further large-scale activity making its way westward, things tend to die off pretty quickly here along the west coast. And that's kind of what we're seeing over the last oh, about 12 hours or so. We haven't seen any major earthquake activity ramping up here along the California region. In fact, most of this is from uh, much earlier uh, this morning time frame, just a couple small microquakes around the Imperial Fault and the Salton Sea area. Inland, notice things have dropped off as well, including Yellowstone National Park. The latest overview here of Yellowstone National Park shows, uh, well, a complete absence of earthquake activity. This time last night, we're looking at a pretty good intense swarm kicking off there, but again, that was prior to the uh, six-pointer struck out there in the China area. Once that earthquake struck, things dropped off like a rock here uh, along the Yellowstone area, which sits up against the North American Craton. 
Not a whole lot of earthquake activity here listed on the map. Maybe a couple small microquakes um, over the last 12, maybe 18 hours or so. But uh, man, nothing like we've seen last night. Across the rest of the country, things very minimal at best. Puerto Rico area, things have dying, uh, kind of dying down as well. Only about 15 earthquakes or so around the south portion of Puerto Rico. And uh, South American plate, pretty quiet. Uh, looking at, uh, like, like I said, the majority of this earthquake activity here into the Kermadec Islands, the Port uh, Van Vanuatu area around Port Vila. All this movement here from earlier uh, this morning and early afternoon time frame. So not a whole lot of renewed movement taking place here throughout the region. Things just kind of at a standstill currently uh, in the area there of the uh, Pacific Plate. We did see a uh, 5.4 in the Iran area. This one uh, kicking off much, much earlier this morning. So it kind of looks like that's about as far as that pressure movement uh, went, as far as the larger scale activity goes. We did see some movement, of course, in the 2 and 3 range across the Mediterranean, but uh, nothing above the 4.0 threshold. Uh, around the uh, Tanzania area, this one kicking up uh, earlier uh, this afternoon time frame as well, 4.7 couple earthquakes around the uh, Atlantic Rift Zones here, across the divergent boundaries, including a 5.1, and also uh, further down south in the southern mid-Atlantic Ridge, seeing a 4.7 kicking up there. The trimmer map tonight uh, looks like we got about zero epicenters once again into the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, it's just come to a stop, a, a complete stop there across the region. And uh, not a whole lot of activity to report there across the Cascadia tonight as far as tremor activity goes. Into the Earthquakes Canada movement uh, up north. Um, let's go, go ahead and see what they got. Uh, if anything, I mean, they got... There we go. Okay, there we go. A couple days ago, we had this earthquake outside of Bella Bella, the BC region. And that's about the only one listed here on the map. Haven't seen any further adjustment in about three or four days here in this area. I don't know if the uh, Earthquakes Canada folks are off uh, on vacation or not, but uh, nothing showing up there across the area. The current space weather event, things kind of mellowing out. We're currently sitting at a KP index here of uh, about a four uh, from the spaceweatherlive.com site. Here is the current uh, Aurora Oval doesn't look like there's too much potential here in the states. Most of the activity confined into the northern Canada region, across the Greenland and the Iceland area. That's got to be a pretty cool sight, seeing volcanic activity along with uh, the northern lights. And of course, down there in the Antarctica regions, all showing a little bit of heightened activity when it comes to the uh, aurora forecast. But uh, overall, we're looking at a normal or at least a uh, uh, typical downtrend here. Uh, noticing over the next couple days things mellowing out here from yellow to green in the area. KP index again listed as a 4 from the solarham.net website. No major solar flaring to report here. Had a little, a little very low M grade flare earlier this afternoon. A one point, uh, I think it was a 1.1 M flare, but uh, not earth directed. Uh, things are looking pretty bleak in terms of a major solar flare activity right now. 3092 is growing a little bit. That's going to be the sunspot right here. But there's not a whole lot of complex uh, complexity there in the magnetic field. In fact, 3092 uh, harbors a alpha magnetic class here. Uh, only a 10% chance of a C flare, M flare, and X flare remains below 1%. So even though it's uh, you know looking pretty large there, the setup here is not uh, dynamic enough or complex enough to produce an M flare uh, or anything higher um, for that sunspot. And uh, we'll just have to watch it. I think maybe this sunspot around the bend here um, on the northeastern side of the limb up here may be growing and it looks a little at least from this angle it looks a little bit more uh dynamic but i can't really tell exactly but we'll see how this plays out 
over the next 24, 48 hours or so in terms of the uh, complex magnetic field that it may harbor. But uh, for now, things are uh, kind of winding down, so to speak, in terms of solar weather activity. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the Samoa Islands, American Samoa Tau Volcano. Uh, that is still sitting at a yellow. I don't think we've seen any uh, major adjustments down there, out there in the Pacific. Let's see if, uh, see if we're going to get it or not. I don't even know if this site's working. It kind of looks like they're uh, a little on the downside. Let's try this again. I'm not for sure what's going on. Got a uh, a little bit of a delay there across the Tau volcano area. Uh, Kilauea volcano still kind of uh, doing this thing. Let's see if this one's working. Kind of looks like there's an issue right now with the USGS Volcanoes website as far as their linkage go to the volcanoes itself. Not for sure what's going on, but uh, it looks uh, appears to be a network-wide error issue. Um, Yellowstone National Park, of course, as I noted, things have died off completely. And um, I think this is going to continue. Um, considering the activity we've seen westward, uh, and all, all across the western Pacific plate and adjacent plates here as we go further west. Things have kind of died off along the west coast and up against the uh, North American craton far as pressure gradients go right now. But uh, is it over? I, I don't know. We'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, let's see what else we have, folks. Is that about it? Um, I'm still, uh, man, I'm still cooking my uh, brisket Still cooking my brisket. It's at 12 hours and about 12 hours and uh, 20 minutes right now. We're into the brisket cooking time. And uh, last time I cooked a brisket, it came out pretty darn good. I wrapped it up uh, about halfway through, but I'm kind of trying something a little bit on the different side this time around. Uh, it's been a long duration since about 8.30 in the morning there for the uh, cooking time. But uh, I, I think it'll be worth it, I hope. Um, I cut it in half and uh, wrapped, pretty much wrapped half of it about and about a third of a way through. And the other half I'm leaving open. I'm kind of curious to see how it will come out. Last time I did that, it came out chewy and tough. But I've been slow, I've kind of been slow cooking it. And... Um, so I'm kind of hoping that comes out really good. Uh, we hit 118 degrees today here in uh, in the area of Northern California where I live at. And somehow, I, I don't know how, but we got humidity coming in here. And uh, it's been making it kind of feel a little bit hotter than what it actually is. So it's been nasty far as the weather goes here um, in terms of the heat. And tomorrow, uh, it's supposed to be a couple degrees hotter. So it's, it's going to be a, a nasty, nasty day. I'm hoping the humidity will at least be a little bit lower. I know we don't have the humidity like they have back in, east and the south. But 25% uh, humidity when it's 118 degrees, it, it, it adds on a little bit. I'd rather see that humidity level down there around the single digits than up there in the higher teens. But uh, all right, guys. I hope everyone has a good night. Again, stay safe out there. And, uh, you know, definitely uh, seeing that westward movement there, see, things have kind of died off completely along the eastern Pacific for now. Uh, but again, you know, who knows how long it's going to take a little bit, uh, a little bit of time to build up for some further adjustment here along the west coast. We'll watch that pretty closely. Uh, current Aurora, Aurora Oval is up right now. Looks again, looks like there might be a little bit, little bit of potential up there into the Canada regions of seeing the auroras, but the likelihoods here in the uh, states not pos. It doesn't look like it's possible tonight. So, have a good night, folks. Again, stay safe out there. We will chat you guys a little bit later on. Peace out, everyone.